The Age of 8 gaming pad by Next Level Racing is a really good solution for haptic feedback and could be just one software update away from being really excellent. Let's find out why. First of all, thank you very much to Next Level Racing for providing one of these gaming pads for review. As always, Next Level Racing doesn't get to see the review before the release and has no impact on it. All the opinions are my own. Before we get into it, there's also a giveaway for five of these gaming pads and one chair. So the winner wins one Elite Gaming Chair and the Haptic Gaming Pad. And then there are four more winners that just get one of these gaming pads. The link for the giveaway is in the description down below. Make sure to use the creator code Dan Suzuki to get 50 extra entries. Okay, before we get into the review, also a big thank you to everyone who subscribed. 30,000, nice milestone. Let's try to get it up to 50,000 this year. That's my personal goal. Let's see if we can get there. What is haptic feedback? Uh, think of it as like a motion light. It's not really any motion, but you still feel stuff that will happen on track or like in flight simulators or in other games, uh, depending on what you use it for. And until now, there were mostly solutions with um, butt kickers or like think of it like a a subwoofer without the speaker so it, it just shakes your body or like whatever you attach to it but it doesn't really move it that much i mean there's always some movement involved otherwise you wouldn't be able to feel it the downside of butt kickers can be that they can be loud i mean you can isolate it and everything to make it quiet uh, but i have one butt kicker installed on my rig as well and it's definitely louder than the gaming mat the edge of eight is just like something you put on top of your chair you can put it in your rig you can put it on your gaming chair whatever everything you can put it on your kitchen chair. It should pretty much work for everyone. For example, here in the Orushi that I'm using, it's a snug fit. It barely fits, but this is also a relatively small seat. I think you should be fine with most seats being used in rigs. The price of the gaming mat is 249 euros, which is cheaper than the cheapest butt kicker that you can buy off the shelves, which is 359 euros, I think. And the build quality itself is very good. Pretty comfortable. I wouldn't say like it's perfect. You can definitely feel where the units are that have the motors but while using it i never thought it's uncomfortable or anything but yeah you can feel where they are it is compatible with pc and console and basically everything that has audio there are two ways to use this either you can connect it via 3.5 millimeter to a pc or you can connect like audio output from your controller to it or something um, and the other possibility is to use it via usb with the hfs software i'm going to show you both methods and this is also one of those points where i think that one simple software update could this make even better. Okay, I'm gonna show you how it works on iRacing because it's my favorite sim. When you install the software, first of all, you have to register for an account. I'm not a big fan of that, but it is what it is. Many softwares work like this these days, but yeah. Sign up, log in, and then you're greeted with this. You can go to the settings and auto detect the current game here if you want that. But we'll just manually hop into iRacing and I'll show you the different effects that you have. There is some um, gear shift. Then there is feedback for the brake, for the rev limiter, acceleration, speed, engine RPM, ground effect and suspension. I will quickly explain what everything is doing and what I came up with the best settings for me. By the way, if you want to test different motors here in the seat, there are eight of them. Four in the bottom, four in the, in the back. Uh, you can go in here and then click on test transducer to see uh, how everything feels like. Just be careful here on, on the last two, like it's always left, right, left, right, and here it's right, left. So uh, <laughs> I didn't read it. I configured my effects and was confused why left and right was mixed up. But yeah, there's a little bug in the software here. Anyways, gear shift, I don't feel super useful to be honest, so I turned it off. Brake will vibrate based on the pedal input. It's not like it will react to ABS or to like tires that lock up. It's from my experience only the pedal input. So if I if I go drive now and I go full lock, it will vibrate a little bit. I don't think it's insanely useful to have the brake as haptic feedback, but okay. So we have that off. Ref limiter is kind of nice. It will vibrate when you hit the ref limit. Okay, ref limiter can be useful. It will basically vibrate when you're meant to shift. I wish the threshold where it will engage was configurable, but I didn't find any option. But it's not super inaccurate. It will vibrate, for example, on the LMDH a little bit earlier um, than your actual shifting point, but it's still like a good reminder when you're supposed to shift. 
Okay, let's go to the next effect. Acceleration is kind of like the brake, just with the acceleration pedal. So depending on the position of your input. Like I'm on the clutch now, so we can just like do it while standing. Oh, you, you have to roll, otherwise the effects are disabled. Um, but there's no reacting to traction control or something. It's just simply accelerator pedal mapped to vibration. In my opinion, not really useful, so I have that turned off. Next thing is speed, but also basically the faster you go, the more it vibrates. I don't really like it. Um, I feel like engine RPM feels more realistic if you want to feel like the motor or anything. Keep in mind, this is where a butt kicker actually is better because the frequency of the butt kicker will basically simulate the RPMs of the engine. So if the RPM is low, the frequency is lower. If you rev up the engine, the frequency of the butt kicker goes higher, which makes more sense. The HF8 only has the amplitude as a modulation. You cannot mod modulate the frequency, so it's a fixed frequency and just like the strength of that vibration basically is changing. And I feel like for engine RPM, it, it feels a little bit I don't know. The butt kicker does it better for engine RPM. But if you want to feel something, I would recommend not enabling all the pads. Maybe just like... Wait, what is... That is the back. Here, this seat RL and seat RR, <laughs> where you feel it in your butt, basically. And having these two on at like 30 to 40%, it feels pretty cool. Especially if you can drive. This is an area where the modulation of frequencies give you better immersion compared to the modulation of the amplitude, if that makes any sense. Um, being used to a butt kicker, I don't really use that effect because it's pretty much just a constant vibration in different strength. And I like to use stuff like that for more informative stuff because like the engine RPM, it will always be there and it, you just get used to it and you will basically stop feeling the rest. So I have that turned off. And then we have the more interesting stuff, which is ground effect and suspension. And this is my configuration here. Keep in mind here, right and left, different order in the last one. Ground effect you feel, for example, when you go over curbs. Yeah, I feel, and it's localized, it's really nice. Like, I feel that the curbs are on the right side, I feel that the curbs are on the left side now. If I go in the grass, okay, I don't really feel that. Very, very slightly, but the curbs are more pronounced. Um, this is pretty cool. There is some latency. If they could improve that, that would be good. I would say it's maybe like 150 milliseconds or something. I didn't really measure it, so I shouldn't put out a number. But there is noticeable latency between you go over the curb and you feel the curb. You get used to it while driving. When you first enable it, you, it, it's a little bit like, okay, this is a bit strange. But after one or two laps, you're used to it. So it's not really a big deal, but I wish they could improve on that latency. And then suspension. I don't really know exactly how it works. Um, I guess it's just like whatever your suspension is doing, then the according pad you configured here is doing stuff. You can feel it very nicely also on the bus stop. We just passed that. Um, but this is this is one of the effects where you can really really feel nicely what the car is doing. I think this is probably my favorite effect. And then add a little bit of the ground effect, and you you really get a cool feeling what the car is doing. <clears throat> Don't judge my driving. <laughs> I've driven a few hours with this and this is basically what I came up with. I have ground effect at like 80%, suspension at 100% and then the rev limiter at 25. You, you barely feel it like that but I still like to get a little feedback when I should shift. And then I can always on the fly increase or decrease the overall volume level of this. And yeah, that is the operation in the HF8 software and if you're used to iRacing, iRacing has an LFE mode. And the LFE mode is 
excellent in giving you feedback when your tires are slipping. And you cannot really get this with the HFS software. Stuff like this, when now your front tires are, are scrubbing, you're losing grip. This information is in the LFB channel. And I wish you could add this as an effect in the HFS software. You can still get it, and my favorite configuration with the gaming pad right now is to just use the LFE channel. And there are two ways to get that. The easy way is connect the 3.5mm jack to a free audio output of your PC. So right now I did connect it to my uh, onboard audio of the mainboard. If you don't know where the LFE is, by the way, it's in options, then go to MISC, MIS, MIS, yeah, whatever. <laughs> And then enable LFE and then select your audio output here. And then you can adjust the main volume and the stuff that I'm talking about. Let's turn this off. I was just testing compared to the butt kicker is uh, wheel slip. I also like to have a little bit of rumble strip, but the wheel slip slider, I think it's insanely helpful. And if you now go out. Wait. I forgot. Of course, we need to get out of the USB mode. So to do that, you take the remote, hold the button for five seconds until it flashes. And now it's listening to the audio from the LFE channel. Oh God. And now if I do this, I feel the traction loss of the tires. And I think this is the most valuable thing that you can get for haptic feedback in terms of improving your lap times. Not necessarily in terms of immersion. If you want immersion, you will use other effects like the RPMs or the suspension, the ground effects, stuff like that. Um, but I personally think the wheel slip is something that actually helps you get quicker on track. And I would like to combine both of them. If we could get ground effects, suspension, maybe a little bit of the uh, rev limit, plus the LFE channel of iRacing, I would be perfectly happy. That would be perfect. There's still some delay here. But it's, it's not bad, to be honest. It's perfectly fine. It would be cool if they could improve it, but even if it's like that, I would be happy with that. Okay, another, another workaround. If you don't want to use the uh, audio cable, do this. First of all, on iRacing, keep your sound at whatever you use for your headphones, Roadcaster in my case. And then uh, go to your Windows sound options and select a different sound card here. For example, in my case, I will just use the output 1-2. It's not connected to the HF8. But if you select that and then you go into the options and you select the output 1-2, where is it? Here. For the LFE, it will listen to it. Only thing you need to do is go into the HFS software, go to home, and then go to this virtual sound card. And then you can adjust the volume here and select which paths should listen to the virtual sound card. If I test this now with the, you can't see it, but I'm playing a sound um, and it will vibrate. Like this, you still get iRacing sound on the sound card you listen to, but the LFE effect will go to the H of 8 gaming pad. And I think, this is why I said this could be one software update away from being really excellent. If they could just like add the virtual sound card into the iRacing category and maybe let us select to which sound card it is listening, then you could have all these cool curb effects, the ground effect, the suspension, plus the iRacing LFE, and that would be amazing. Because iRacing LFE is only single channel, so I don't feel like everything vibrates now. I don't feel if it's left, right or something. So it would be cool to have, for example, the curbs processed by the HFS and then iRacing LFE for tire slip. And that would be really, really amazing.
So yeah, compared to the butt kicker, you don't get modulation of frequency. You only get modulation of amplitude. So it's not, the fidelity of the haptic feedback is not as high as it is with the butt kicker, but the plus is cheaper. It's way quieter. It's much easier to install for the butt kicker. I had to drill three holes into my seat to attach it to the bottom. And for most haptic effects, I think amplitude modulation is perfectly fine. The frequency modulation is nice to feel like the engine vibration or stuff like that. It feels a little bit dumped down with the H of 8. You can still feel it, but I didn't really like it that much. But to be fair, I'm also not a big fan using that with a butt kicker because it's, I think it's just like information overload. But for 249 euros, I think this is an excellent device to get a little bit more immersed in the game. Just keep in mind, it's not perfect for everything. I hope Next Level Racing can maybe include the iRacing LFE somehow into the HFS software by adding the virtual sound card device with a custom sound card into the iRacing section. That would be, that would be amazing. And if they could improve the delay a little bit, that would be good. Like I said, it's not a deal breaker. It's noticeable at first, but you get used to it. But yeah, I just wanted to mention it to um, be fully transparent here. Another thing to consider, it's not really a deal breaker or anything. You just need to like, you need to readjust your seating position. If you put it on the seat, you will be a little bit higher and a little bit closer to the steering wheel. Not a big deal. Just keep in mind that you need to readjust. I think it's a great product, especially looking at the price. It works with many games. It works with sim racing, flight simulation. They even said it works with shooters. I haven't tried it out. But I'm sure it's cool to feel haptic feedback in PUBG, for example. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this. If you liked it, maybe click the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or just want to chat, feel free to join the Discord server, also on the link below. And I'm also streaming on Twitch, typically on Tuesday, Wednesdays and Friday. Maybe come and say hi there. And don't forget to enter the giveaway. It's running for the next week, I think. Link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.